What? How? <laughs> How are you doing? Episode four, five, six <gasps> today, I love that. which Sarah loves. That for sounds sure. <gasps> smooky. <laughs> Stop it right now. I do not want to laugh. I am in a bad mood. Oh. And I do not want you to grease the wheels. No. With your hilarity. Oh, with my hilarity. Oh, no, I, just, I, do, I have so many, so many wonderful, funny things to talk about. No, I about. do. I want you to be funny. Why, you, why are you so laugh. bummed, huh? Just like regular oh, life I mean, stuff or what? Exhausted? Yeah, well, remember last week we talked about the the how california is on fire and Correct. that is for sure affecting my health and so i've have oh, migraines gosh. every day and you know how like some people will get a headache and then they'll call it a migraine and you're like you don't fucking i well, don't know is- because i don't think i've ever had a migraine Susie. so i really yeah, well, like genuinely if you don't know if you've had one you have not right because they're so horrendous <laughs> And I've had them every day. Thank you for uh, climate change deniers for making California God. a hellhole. It really anyway, is terrible. Well, how are you yeah. doing? You know, I'm doing better than that. <laughs> You're I mean, not on death's door. I'm not on death's door. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. For the first, well, th- tell let me. me tell you about the cycle of events that, that took place over the last two weeks. So I was like feeling, okay. you know, like bummed, like just like sad as one does during these, yeah. these uncertain Tough times. times. Mm-hmm. So I was like in my sad place and <laughs> I did the thing that I like to do. Well, and I, I was like, okay, let's utilize my resources. Let's talk to Ren and let's like put a list together. And he was really helpful yeah, of like what I could do. Functioning of, like, adult. Yes. So let's like handle the stuff. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was like, okay, let's like make a list of like things that, that bring me joy. So I'm like thinking about all the stuff that brings me joy. And one of the things that really makes me happy is like baking. So I have been doing some like serious uh, perfecting of my key lime pie, which is like the easiest mm. thing in the world to make. And Ren taught me how to make it. And now since it's like so simple... It's fun when you take a really simple recipe and you like try to perfect it. But it's funny. I told her, I figured out, I, I just realized that Ren is in this really tough position where he realizes that uh, I'm like trying to perfect the pie. So, and so I asked him <laughs> like, is there anything that like, like I should change? And he yeah. doesn't want to say no because like he wants right. to tell me it was he the wants perfect to pie. Assist you. Right. But if he says, no, it's perfect, then I'm not going to make any more because it's like, okay, it's good, <laughs> th- done. Mm-hmm. So he's like, um, well, I mean, like maybe we could change like the, the ratio of like whipped cream to pie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. That'll work. Let's change, right. how I, change how you maybe decorate it. Maybe pie needs to be bigger. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So I've just been making, so that's the first part of the story, making mm-hmm. heavy pies. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm not eating a lot of the pie. Like, you know, Ren's eating the pie. I'm like, bring some pie to my aunt. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah. well. There's pie distribution. There's pie distribution. However, there's a lot of taste testing going on. <laughs> that, that, like, what, like, to the point where I'm like, hmm, there's like a lot less whip, whipped cream than there was. I ate so much whipped cream. That's like, beautiful. That's I, great. And like, f- like the, f- like the, everything was homemade. It was so delicious. But because I'm of all this, I was like, oh, I'm kind of feeling like a little slower a little than bloated. usual. <laughs> slower. We'll call it that. So I busted out the, and this is like not an ad at all, but I okay. busted out that cross rope, jump rope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy mm-hmm. mother yeah, joke. of God. I mean, that's a workout. I'm. Die. I'm. I was like. Yeah. First of all, I learned then that I'm definitely not going to survive a zombie apocalypse at this current state. No, like, I get it. I mean, we got we got to up the <laughs> up the, the the jumps. Like that like, was a wake gotta, up call. That was a big time wake up call. I I got I got flashbacks to yeah. my days on the challenge when I w- was like <laughs> real relaxed in my cardio. <laughs> Where I was like doing a little more like chilling than running. Right. And I was just like, but the good thing is I live on the only, like, I I don't have an outside area. I live on a second story, like, and we have a balcony that's like over the street. And, uh, and because it's like second story and everybody who's like driving by can see it, I'm doing my workout out there and it makes me feel like I have to be really accountable. 
absolutely. So it's like doing you have it with an audience. This, r- yes. Yes. So it has become my like like you know. So honestly, yeah. I've been thinking about this. How a lot of your not your anyone's mm-hmm. um, flaws or like weaknesses you can kind of turn them around to be helpful. Like in that case, we love an audience. Love. We're performers. Yeah. <laughs> we like attention. True. Yep. So in that way, yep. it's helping you become healthier and more fit. Totally. I'm utilizing so that. Cool. And then when I totally had to run inside and puke my brains out. You didn't. I, oh, well, I mean, puke I didn't your like, brains out. First of all, I didn't like puke my brains out. I'm being very dramatic, but I absolutely dry heaved because Get I was here. was jumping like I was like working so hard, man. Like good for you, you know. I mean, that is impressive. I got because Susie. I mean, like you're so good with a routine and being consistent. I really was like thinking to myself, I'm like if you just just yeah. do it. Just I know. Start- Honestly. Uh, and that and this, Nike oh, slogan is Oh my God, you're key. so right. It, just do it. Just like, just do it. And it's so... Just do it. But, you know, I talk to clients about this. I talk to and, uh, friends, you about this, that we have, <laughs> like, the change process, it's not just like you want to do something or you don't want to do it. It's like yeah. there's a whole it's process spectrum. of change where mm-hmm. it's like pre-contemplation like you haven't even thought about changing then there's like the contemplating that is the so change. true the, this is like a real mapped out stage stages like, i agree like for real and it is so helpful when you understand that that, that you know like maybe i'm in the stage where <laughs> like i'm aware that the problem exists but i'm not there's not really a commitment that I'm making to take You're action. You're not ready for that. I'm not ready. Yeah. And then okay. my favorite stage, which I feel like I existed in for the last like six months, preparation, <laughs> which is like the intent on taking the action to address the problem, but like... You haven't done it yet, but you're, you're intending to, <laughs> you intend to, and then That's fine. Yeah. we get the action. So now I'm like in action mode, you know, because I've like jump roped like twice. Well, that's um, why I say the five minute thing, like just do something that? for five minutes. Oh, that's so good. Cause that's how I started my fitness journey. Like three years ago. It's like, I can do five Susie. minutes. Susie, yeah. this is really, <laughs> I feel like you've told me this before probably, but like this is one of those times where I'm like open to the advice yeah. and like <laughs> right, I right, needed right. to hear it. Yeah. Just do five minutes. And maybe it's because, And I did like, that yeah. for a whole year. It's not like I ramped up n- Oh, the next I was week. gonna ask you that. Yeah. A whole year I did five minutes only. Oh, get out. And you- Yeah. And you know what? I did I watch your arms go minutes. like get yeah. super like crazy toned. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, I, I'm sure she just does it. And I think about your mom and her running up and down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, 10 minutes she does. That's it. And my yeah. mom, I'm like, all these old ladies, not old, sorry, ladies, you're just s- saged wisdom ladies are, yes. you know. Uh, also, who cares if we call each other old? I don't even give a fuck about that. I agree. Okay, good. So all these old ladies are like out workouting me. And so I got to like, you know, I'm got to move from the preparation to action phase. Yeah, but seriously, five minutes. Five minutes. It's so good because I like- It's doable. F- I lasted nine minutes and 17 seconds before I was like- Wow, what? that's a lot. No <sighs> wonder you puked. I was that's like, a lot for that jump rope. Thanks. And like, ooh, the the arm workout. This was like totally not a commercial. More like a no. commercial for health. Because yeah, like, for sure. you know, it's like, so yeah. So Were that you was, sore the next day? So I would have been. If yes. I did, and you know yeah. what? I, where I was sore, which is like, it makes a lot of sense. My feet. No way. I Were you sw- doing it barefoot? No. Oh, but that would feel really <laughs> why good. Why are you reacting? Like I don't know that? because, like, I, I have no idea why I did that. Because, like, I feel like that would be maybe because, like, <laughs> the, like it's I live in like a concrete jungle. Like, you know, true. Yeah, it's just everywhere is just when cement. Your feet hurt. I think Was because I haven't used them. No, I the arch. You know, like, like because I, when you jump, when <sighs> I jump rope, I kind of jump on my tippy toes. Yeah, which is a funny Holy word. Heck, there's really no adult <laughs> way to say tippy toes. Have Tip-toes? you been drinking? No, I love what you are being like I right have, now. I have not, but I didn't have breakfast, and okay, that's why I had a, a little of sliver of key lime pie, of and pie. I had a lot of coffee. <laughs> oh I've had God. sugar and coffee. Okay, well, let yes. me say this on that note: 
if you have <laughs> jumped rope yes. and ate some key lime pie yes, and had a good night's sleep, you still might be like, but I don't feel great yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because you need better help. Yes. Oh, I, got, I love it. <laughs> I love you right now. Oh, it's really great. Talk about an easy way to sign up. Everybody should be doing this. Better help is so great. Um, I, I don't know if you guys feel the way I do right now, but you can have moments where you feel like the whole world is just falling apart. And that's why you need help, whether it is, you know, a therapist or a community of friends or whatever. And it's even better if you have all of those things. And so a good place to start is better help. They have licensed professionals ready to provide counseling for you 24 hours a day, super convenient via your phone or your iPad or whatever you use. Anything from depression to anger to family conflicts um, and grief, which I think we're all struggling with, and trauma. Anything you share is confidential, and you can choose a counselor that is specializing in what you need. And they have services available worldwide, and it's affordable and professional and convenient, and I can't recommend it enough. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash brain candy. And I've heard from a lot of brainiacs who have used it and they are really doing well. And that makes me happy. Yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Just a little, like, little checkups, a little check-in, whatever you oh my need, God. a little quick text, like... For it's, real. It's great. Everybody needs, life everybody so needs hard. like, a, you know, somebody in their corner that's like... For sure. And a professional... And I bet a lot of people feel lonely right now. Yep. You know. I miss you. And, like, oh. I have not ever even been inside your apartment. Susie, I don't even want to get started on it. It will just <laughs> make me angry. It. And not even about you not co- – just like – It's I, so wrong. Do you know how much I love putting out a charcuterie platter? I do know. Do you know how much I love having like – I would. I miss our game nights. I miss like, you know, bugging just Lincoln. Just time together. Yes. Like, wh- I mean, what do we – we're not – I mean, Thanksgiving? Come on now. Right. What's, What's going to happen? What's that? <clears throat> this is like going to be solo – you know, I know for how long, Sarah? For I don't know, man. I don't know either, but it's terrible, and I just miss like connecting with you and people. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure everyone shares that pain. It is a bummer, man. <laughs> so no, yeah, you, you gotta do things. You gotta do stuff that fills up the joy cup. Oh my gosh. Okay, so okay, but but oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of which story I even want to talk about because now that you've said, like. Let's not be sad. I How, know. But it's not sad. It's happy. Can we just talk about the adorable documentary, My Octopus Teacher? Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. I'm so glad that you told me to watch that. I'm so glad you did. Me too. And I yeah. watched it at the perfect time. Like it yeah. was early, early. We're talking like five thirty in the morning. Sun's not even up. I'm like curled up on the couch, you know, with my coffee. See, when you get started at five a.m., you drink a lot of coffee. Um, <laughs> and it was just like beautiful, and I was just really like focused and paying attention. And you know, it's a ama- It's really those oct- octopi are <laughs> f- like phenomenal creatures. What's your favorite part? Well, first of all, this is on Netflix. It's oh, yes, a documentary. Yes, yes. And tell um, me important parts. <laughs> it was about this guy. I think he was in South Africa. Yes. And he um, was struggling in his mm-hmm. life, as many people are right now, mm-hmm. and decided to go back to sort of his childhood, which was by the sea. Mm-hmm. And he just started, what would you call that? Free diving? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. He went and, uh, first of all, the water in South Africa is Stunning. freezing. Oh, well, beautiful yes. and stung- stunning, but it's freezing. It's right. really, really cold. And you can like tell by looking at it, it's cold. And mm-hmm. it is choppy and it looks dangerous. And yeah. so I was even just like, this is, this takes real I said that to Adam. I and- said, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars, what he was doing. It was, oh my, what about the nighttime dive? 
Right. Oh, I was nuts. so I, it, I was so scared. We kept going, this guy's nuts. The, I mean, it's uh, it's it's interesting because I could see myself getting there. Not in cold water oh, because yeah. that's insane, but I could see how and and how he it was just like one small decision each time of how to get closer to nature. And one of the things he said that I thought was so beautiful is he did this and where he kind of got the idea is he did this documentary film following these trackers in Africa and they are some of the best, the, not some of, I would say the best trackers in the world and are so, and he said they are not observing nature. They are part of nature yes. and they are involved in, like they are a part of the system and they're in it, not yeah. Watching and that's it. like the goal. That's what everyone should be, but we're not. We're not at all. Mm-hmm. And so he went in with the intention of like, how do I be in it? And yeah. try. And it, it meant not using a dive tank and free diving. So he's just breathing, like holding his he didn't breath. Didn't have a wetsuit on. Didn't have a wetsuit, which I also really understand too, because he said he wanted to be able to feel like the environment and, and respond to it. And there's something about wetsuits. Maybe it's the, the thickness and the neoprene and something where it really does take away the... Yeah, that's why I like them. The, yeah, it does create like this this barrier. You this like safe, safe Yes, there. you feel mm-hmm. safe. You feel protected. Like if something bit you, you'd be like, oh, I'm okay. You know, right. which, even if it's like, that's not true at all. Exactly. Like, so it I, gives you a I, sense I totally of, um, understood separation. It. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I got and and there's no place I feel more relaxed and more. Yeah, at you're ease. a little mermaid. Oh God, it's the most beautiful. Like, so I got it, and I was like, I want to be there. The so cinematography bad. was so soothing oh. as well, and so stunning. And you how, really got a sense for all the beautiful colors under the sea. And how did he do the, that, Sarah? Susie. I, do not understand. I don't how he know either this. because he went yeah. alone, right? So, and he uh, didn't have a tank, so he was just taking a breath and filming. But yeah. it doesn't seem like that. It's and so I fluid. do know it's so amazing. Mm-hmm. He's very talented. It really is a beautiful. I'm so glad that this kind of art and that, that like he's able to put it together like this, and that that. Oh, the, the, this kind of, I don't know, uh, like artistic form can be like marketed and, and to the masses. To the masses yeah, that we can all like, because it does seem something like something that it, if you didn't have a camera there that was so high, if, if we didn't have the equipment that we do now, this would not be able to. Well, and a be lot a of thing. times with films like that, they can get preachy. And yeah. sort of like, yeah. this is why you need to take care of the ocean. And totally. you're like, okay, yeah, obviously. But this wasn't that at all. It just showed you and then you can make your own conclusions about yeah. what's, what the message is, which oh. I liked. And I thought I was going to not like him. I thought I was going to be like, <laughs> oh, gosh, why? this guy. Because I'm like, oh, look at you with your oceanfront property in South Africa. <laughs> and because I've been there and I've seen like what the 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 – there's such like a, a wealth inequality like gap there oh, that right, it yeah. just feels like you know like right, I, I can imagine tell me how to be right in tune yeah. with nature and I can right, imagine okay. the kind of childhood he had of like oh you know like, okay you got that I see ocean. so I was like okay this this guy like your privilege <laughs> a lot of you the the, the the you know like the the freedom to go do this so but he was very humble and very like yeah. He was um, broken. He was a broken yes, man. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was, you know, I'm down for that. Can you believe, <laughs> though, that he made contact with that octopus? The, I, and they're, like, that's why they I think were, that they have, they're really, they know some shit. I know. That makes me sad. I, I'm never eating them again. But then I was like, if they die that fast. <laughs> I'm never eating them again. I couldn't. Like, I can't think, I can't. Oh, my God, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry thinking Don't about know. it. This movie made me cry. Oh, Sarah. So silly. Because it's a stupid octopus, but you have to see the movie and then you'll be like. (laughs) I love you. It's so dumb. So you felt um, a kinship with the octopus. Uh, More like like with nature. 
Yeah. Well, and how we turn that off so that we can sort of do whatever the fuck we want. Right. Yeah, but it's like the maybe like the octopus like has it right, you know? How so? Because like it's not like spending money on n- mascara, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, but right, right, but right. then again, maybe that's our camouflage or maybe that's our like, you know, like mating dance. So maybe it is fine. It's just like our version of it. Our mating but, dance. Yeah, good point. Isn't it kind of like? Yeah, for sure. You know, but it was just so, it was so cool. And like, I, you know, you learned, oh, you just learned so much. Like when it was like walking, I'm like. Oh my God. This is a thing. Th- how can you eat something that is bipedal? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, that's I, true. I know. I it's know. like it, I'm like nah, and that that its tentacle, that two thirds of its consciousness is in its body, like in it, like yeah. I barely even understand cups. what that means. <laughs> right, because they were saying his cognition or her cognition. cognition was partially in her brain, but mostly in her tentacles. Like that's like and the little suction cups. On They're all learning, like. I mean, that by, was really beautiful. by octopus standards, we're dumb. Like, yeah. they can like they can do a bunch of stuff. But there was a part that I disagreed with, though. That I'm okay. What? So I wasn't a big fan. I was kind of mad that he didn't scare the sharks away. Oh, I so don't, there's yes. always like this question of whether he could should or would intervene yes if the octopus was being threatened yes and right. my argument for why is like you saw the connection that they had like this octopus like definitely like knew who he was trusted and trusted yeah. him haven't you seen all of those videos those animal videos out there where like the dog runs in and saves the cat from like the bobcat or like mm-hmm. like Animal buddies absolutely protect, like, cross species and jump in and I save agree. their friends. So could you imagine you're this little octopus and you're like, oh, this is my buddy and I trust yeah. him and we're coming out and we're, like, hanging out and having a good time and the shark comes by and he just kicks back and does nothing? I'd be like, whoa, I thought we were <laughs> friends. That might even be why the lobster got attacked because if I were the lobster, I would have assumed, not lobster, uh, octopus, I yeah. would have assumed that this guy. He had your back. And then he even helps him catch food, like the lobster, you know, mm. like they, he uses him, like it seems like they had a, a like a symbiotic relation, like kind of like a, I you agree know, with you. and so, but, and then when the shark did bite him, spoiler alert, <laughs> um, but he's okay. He was okay. Um, also spoiler alert. Um, I should say that before. <laughs> should have said that before. Just keep uh, doing apologies. that. Yeah, right? Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, uh, afterwards, he like fed, bro- like fed him animals, or, like little <laughs> shells and mall and like got him like back to health. So you can like yeah. nurse him back to health, but mm-hmm. you can't protect him afterwards. That scene, I, I was like, mm, 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 mm. I was yeah, mad about that. Do you remember that. in the documentary... The the penguin one, the march of the. Can penguins. you believe it? I've never seen it. Oh my gosh! I think you would like it. I know it's like a classic, but like, yeah, I will. De- I'm definitely gonna cry. I mean, these yeah. animal ones come; they just get to me. Yeah, that and was I- a beautiful one too. Yeah, and okay. in that one, they had to grapple with that same question, Ugh. but that was different because whenever a human in- intervenes in Antarctica, then. It can really throw things off right. overall because then they start to trust humans, which they shouldn't because some humans go oh, there and do things them. that aren't. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in this case, that's really not a concern. That right. octopus only has a lifespan of one year. I don't think the risk <laughs> is really great of some sort of interplanetary uh, imbalance Yeah, or whatever, you know, Yeah, uh, interspecies imbalance. Right. Um, so I would agree with you that. Go ahead and take that shark's the ass. Shark. Yeah, and he's only got a year. Let him have a good one. Like, oh my God. I I don't know. I was just like mad about that part. Yeah, I see you your know? point. So, mm-hmm. 
It felt like betrayal. And then, like, could you imagine afterwards if I were the octopus? I'd be like, Yeah. What yeah, the fuck? fuck, you. fuck yeah, where, right. Where were you, Thanks dude? Thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. I'd be like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to have your back. That's it. I'm out of here. So, but I thought, I thought it was really, and like the, it's, it's so amazing that he captures some footage of things that, that I want to say octopi. That's the right thing to say. Correct. What well, used to be, they changed it. Now it's octopuses. Oh, for Christ's sake. I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> octopuses. <laughs> ah, that's the funniest word. Oh, <laughs> octopuses. Right? Right. Yeah, that's But every funny. time I say it, I feel like that feels weird. Yeah, it does. It definitely feels like the name of a James Bond supervillain. <laughs> Dr. <Right>. Octopuses. <laughs> I know there is like a Dr. Octopus probably, and there is probably a... Mm-hmm. Oct- not, so, you know, I know that's a thing. People are like, but I'm not a nerd <laughs> like that, so like don't at me, okay? You can call it whatever you want, though. Yes, yes, but... So yes, I thought it was beautiful. And then in the end, it was like, yeah, but the parts, it's funny because like the parts that I thought were going to make me cry, like didn't, but it was like other parts that were just like beautiful, like more like reflective parts of like, oh. Yeah, I would agree. man, did it make me want to go swimming. (sighs) I want to be in the ocean so, I just want to like be underwater just like all the time. I'm going to just fill up my bathtub. Yeah, I was saying to Adam how... Like for so many people, the things that most of us do to restore our mental health Mm -hmm. or our physical health um, are no longer options. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why so many people are suffering mentally and Mm -hmm. physically right now because there's no restoration. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I had to come up with different techniques like key lime pies, which led me to (laughs) jump roping. So... (laughs) And the good news is I'm in a much better mood. And puking. But I'm in a much better mood. Are you? Oh, for sure. Okay, good. Because I could feel the good endorphins. Like I could feel the, like I've had a week of like, okay, getting things crossed off the to-do list, you know, like. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, you were feeling like in control. Yeah, yeah. And then it like all ties together. You know, you're like, oh, I'm feeling like, oh, I'm not motivated. No, then I my to-do list piles up. And then you're like, oh, crap, now I've got so much to do. And so now I'm like, yeah, got to turn this ship around. Let me use some of my own techniques. Here we go. And good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, got to like practice what I preach, I suppose. I guess. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean, yes, I feel like funny. it's kind of like on Will and Grace, how she was an interior designer. Oh and my God. She was living out of boxes. I mean, that's really funny. That's most people with their jobs. Yeah. Well, you know, that's good. That gives me a little bit of uh, uh, freedom then a little. Or like a medical doctor who smokes cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, it happens, oh, for you know. sure. It happens. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh, who cares? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But definitely care about that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, what else do I want to talk to you about? Yeah, what that else? was beautiful. What else? What else? Tell me. Anything fun going on? Anything? Any poop stories? Oh, me? Oh, uh, <clears throat> this one's real funny. Okay. I I want. I almost want you to just do it, and then I want you to like laugh at what the reaction is because this is okay. how I found out about this fact. So get out your oh phone. God. Or computer. Okay. And oh, uh, please play along, <clears throat> listeners. All okay. I want you guys to do, if you're not driving, but like who the hell is driving anywhere right now? Google how lobsters communicate. How do lobsters communicate? How do... <clears throat> okay. And just look Let's at the see. result. <gasps> Sarah! Yeah, Ew! what the heck? What the heck? They pee out of their faces. Why does it say that's how they communicate? Because that is how they communicate. What? Isn't that crazy? Lobsters pee out of their faces. They have urine-released nozzles right under their eyes. They urinate in each other's faces as a way of communicating either when fighting or mating. Isn't or that? mating. Oh, my God. They're into golden showers. Oh, my God. I didn't even take it that far, but that's hilarious. <laughs> what is the reason for this? I, oh, I, wouldn't, I would imagine that it's because, like, that's where fer- their pheromones are or wherever, like, the, some hormones they're secreting that can help them communicate. <clears throat> but... Yeah, and you know how I love facts on lobsters. So somebody sent me this one, and I was like, oh, my God, thank you. A brainiac or, like, someone in your life? I 
I can't remember. Well, it's got to be a brainiac. It's got to be. That's hilarious. Yeah. So somehow I, fe- I came across this. And then also in there, in that same article, or it was like t- facts on lobsters, it <laughs> was debunking the lobsters are monogamous myth. Oh, really? Yes. That despite what friends tells you, they are yeah. not monogamous. And in fact, the, the way that they made, like this I learned, this is totally weird. So <laughs> since we're on like an underwater theme, uh, yeah. female lobsters that when they are, uh, like going into, like when they're molting, when they're shedding it, like their, their shell and they're in this in-between phase where they're like growing a new one, that's when they are like open for mating, basically. It's like, they're basically like undressed and- <laughs> Then male lobster can deposit his sperm and she carries it around with her and she can carry it around with her for up to two years. And no. she may be like with another lobster, but still have be holding on to the sperm of another one. Why? I, I Just don't know. Just in case? Yeah, I guess so. Like save it for a rainy day. Totally. She's like her own sperm bank. Yeah, who knew? Learned a lot about lobsters. So yeah, it's like Monica Lewinsky of the oh my god, community. stop! Look at that. Still throwing stop. out the uh, the old, the, <laughs> the, old, the old 1990s references. Uh, wow! But I do Where like did the 90s it? resurgence. Oh, good question. Probably in some sack. I would imagine it sounds like a place. Where- <laughs> there's probably like a, there's always a sack or something I like that. I picture like an actual little bag. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, you know what? That. This is funny. This is like, like, kind of like our bag of dicks. Like, what does the sack? What does your sack look like? <laughs> right. What are they carrying around? Well, I would imagine it couldn't be netted because it's got to, like, you know, hold some no. semen. It's got to be like, like, yeah, it's got to be so- like a solid, yeah, like a Ziploc bag. Satchel- like- <laughs> oh my god! It cannot be clear. That's just bad taste. Oh gosh! Oh, but so good taste when it comes to home <laughs> organization. <laughs> True. Oh, that's so funny. Speaking of which, have you seen the Home Edit uh, uh, television show on Netflix? No. And I love I'm it. Boycotting. Why? <laughs> why? 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 Well, no good reason. Don't worry. They're like, like you, you and me. No, I know. I did hear that. I read the article about it in the New York Times. Oh, but yeah. The article made me unfollow them <gasps> on Instagram <laughs> and not watch it. I know. Well, I I'm not going to read that then. No, it wasn't anything bad. They were just pointing out like <clears throat> how, you know, the let's say they redo somebody's pantry mm-hmm. and then they, you know, they do the rainbow mm-hmm. look mm-hmm. and then there's never, like when they put a picture on Instagram, there's never sort of an errant bag of chips that like doesn't really fit into any of the categories. Right. And so the New York Times journalist was saying like, what's the deal? Like, how is there never any kind of miscellaneous stuff and they're like well that's just for instagram mm-hmm. and i don't like that because it makes people think that that's what that your pantry should look like mm. and i get it it's aspirational i really do but i just felt mm-hmm. like no i'd rather follow like realistic organization rather than aspirational mm. yes 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 i will say what they do a good job mm-hmm. of like posting <laughs> pictures of people like inspired by the home edit or whatever and they're all mm-hmm. re- they're very realistic and like those I like you know, better. And I love any organizational tips and tricks. And I just like uh you know, two female uh, you know, like I hear they're very funny. Oh, and they're just hilarious and, and they're totally it's totally you and me. Well and they in said that in the article how they sell merch that's like pointing out how they are just white knuckling life like all of us are <laughs> yeah but then they're posting these pictures that make people feel like oh okay i have to have like this rainbow themed yeah. pantry and everything has to have a place and i just feel like it makes people feel bad oh my god it's so funny because your house is like that for me <laughs> you live in <laughs> the home you. edit which is like so funny i'm like nobody <laughs> is closer to that that i know maybe my Thank friend you. audrey she has a pantry that does look like that and when you have those boxes, like some of the boxes to yeah. to like put it in, you I you absolutely can, like yeah, you know, hide some things away. Not my closet because that that's just crazy right now. You have to have a big ass pantry. That's the other thing. Everybody's got that's huge true huge pantries. I my pantry is in my bath my bathroom because I live in L.A. and that is what it is. So oh, is that designed like that or that's no, just how you do it? That's just oh, spillover okay. because there's no room in our kitchen. 
We don't have an actual proper pantry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. I live in a... It's teeny, teeny, tiny. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Okay. It's always funny when, like, somebody comes over, all of the the three people who have come over, and I'm like, here's the tour. This room. (laughs) This room. That's it. And that's it. Well, that's all right. The end. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Turn around. There you go. (laughs) Well, and you are very organized... So I'm sure oh, I'm trying. It's, it's hard. I had to. The well, and and they do. What do they say? There, it's like four stages: edit, then oh, c- categorize. Yeah, edit, categorize, contain, and maintain. Wow, I think that last one's kind of the problem. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So how do you find a? How do you do something that is sustainable in like realistic for what you? like work with like she went oh she she redid you know what she, give the show a chance because they're, okay. they're like the the episode she she did a and she, this is what she they do in the episode i'm like totally defending them like this is like my show that like i'm like no i want to know if so I would like it she she does they do two different um houses or rooms and so one will be like a regular person and one will be a celebrity so Mm -hmm. and it's fun because you just want to see a celebrity's closet and so that's like just um yeah you know voyeuristic like love that and then (laughs) the one that uh one of my favorite ones is she um uh she redid the closet of this doctor and they uh all the women at her office like nominated her and they made it super like organized and realistic for like her day to day and there's like a sta- a dump station where she can like dump out all of the stuff from like her purse when she goes to switch purses because she likes to switch purses a lot she's got like a whole section for like just her scrubs and her like stethoscopes to hang up and like they make it so like y- you see the stuff that you'll use and you know and then one of the, like like mm-hmm. silly little things that i don't even think about like mm-hmm. um when you do your drawers organize them like how you like how your body is like like tops on the top shelf and then bottoms on the lower shelf and Hmm. it's just like your mind works like that and i did that to my drawers and i was like oh my god why didn't i do i did that like when i was a kid growing up but not now and as soon as i switched that i was like oh i feel better like, really? For sure. I don't know why. Okay. Because like my brain didn't have to work as hard to know which drawer my socks were in. I'm like, oh, the bottom one, right where my feet are. <laughs> oh my gosh, socks on the bottom. Yeah. I can't even believe that. You yeah. It blew my mind. It's, it's silly, but it totally works. Like bras on the top are my top drawer, then my wow. shirts, then my long sleeve shirts. I don't think shirts. most people are keeping socks on the bottom. Where are you keeping socks? Tops? Top? Yeah, because usually there's the drawers are smaller on the top. Oh yeah, that's where like you bras know. and bras and undies go. Wow, yeah, socks on the bottom. I mean, that's socks I'm going to think about that. Yeah, yeah, but also I have like a lot of narrow drawers. They're like not deep, so I mm-hmm. you know it's different. I got like a lot. We had no drawers in there. I had to like makeshift. This is now just me talking about my organization. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is like no, probably interesting to know. It. I'm only boycotting like informally so you know if it brings people joy and they yes. feel inspired by it that's so cool oh i love but it Suze, the yeah the uh, the i watch the uh highlight reel of one of the girl's sons that she has like it's her mm-hmm. like making fun of her kid who's so funny i watch that like monthly for a good laugh no. and i will just be in the bedroom cracking up and ren will be like what are you doing i'm like oh, i'm just watching that kid i like <laughs> oh my god it it's, just lightens your load oh it's so fu- you just crack up i feel like you you are this you would you'd be like oh i, I would have done that that is that's totally that's that, <laughs> I, I see her i i'm i that all is, right so I'll even if try. you just watch that reel and if mm-hmm. you don't laugh and you don't think that's the freaking most hilarious thing then you know mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what we would uh, then I don't know we might like lose <laughs> at the newlywed game now I don't know <laughs> oh my god all right I'll watch it oh that's funny I'm like too much time apart I don't even know your taste anymore but I love it and if you don't whatever everybody okay. else does yes you could definitely at me if you like that too 
And your house totally looks like that. Ren came over and he was like, your house is organization. Like he talks about it. He's like, my house? Yes. Yours is the bar. That's so nice. Oh my my God. God. Yes. Yeah. We say that we've said that. For sure. That's nice. Yeah, for, My when God. Came over Thanksgiving, you know. This is another example of what I was talking about earlier how, like, our weaknesses or flaws can be advantageous. So I have a perfectionism problem uh-huh. and I kind of obsess about stuff, but mm-hmm. it does make for a very organized house. <laughs> yes, it does. Like, my anxiety has I'm, perks. Yeah, I'm trying to think about what my weaknesses help. I mean, I definitely well, do clean like a crazy person. Oh my God, it was so funny. I did. I totally like the other day I was like, you know, telling Ren like, oh, you know, like, you know, there's a little bit like, you know, you missed around here or like whatever. Like, I don't know. I was probably being bossy for sure. Being bossy. And, uh, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, no, sorry. No worries. Like, I'll get it. You know, like, I'm, I'm sure like if we, uh, you know, when we're around, like, you know, you're going to miss some spots here or there. And in my mind, I was like, I never miss spots anymore. <laughs> but of course well, that's not true. true i'm just like a cra- like Adam i take q-tips to like the bottles like the 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 lotion like you know i want it to look new everything gets touched it's, i'm crazy but that's fine i like it yeah i, do I too. support that yeah and like, adam will say to me can you please he'll say can you please <laughs> let me make the bed and i'm like no because you don't do it right. <laughs> you don't do it yes that's He's like just teach me Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, but that he's open to learn. That's really good. No, yeah, but he won't do it right. Right. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's. I agree. It's the same. But it's like you know, good is good enough. You tell me. I try. Not. No, but it if isn't. that's no, it's not. I know. <laughs> it's I say a lie. that, but it's I tell absolutely myself. not. I. I swear. And oh God. But you know what? This is. This is. Don't ever get black countertops. Also, just like yes, that's, that my, that's my. That's my PSA. I did not do that. <laughs> this is. This is a PSA for everybody. Don't ever, and even if you like move into a place and like you go visit an apartment and you're like, wow, these black granite countertops look so beautiful because it looks so nice and clean with everything sleek. white and black and sleek. You uh-huh. will see every water yeah, spot. Closer. Oh my God. I worked God. at a place that had friggin' black toilets and no. you cannot imagine. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 you can't. It's like every that's such drop. a bad. <gasps> no, no. Oh, Ew. No. No. So gross. So, yeah. So I'm a crazy person and that's that. And and that's that. Yeah. And I don't even care. But, yes. I'm trying to think about what else I want to talk to you about besides me being a crazy person. I Did do, you watch the yeah. Alien doc too? No, not yet. Okay, well, and it's like the on short one, which is like yeah. silly that I haven't watched it. Okay. Um, okay. What I want to talk about. Uh, well, I'm going to complain more. So get Great. ready for this. This Fantastic. is some street art that i'm like (sighs) oh you don't you don't like that usually i i don't like it when it's stupid and annoying right and oh why isn't this link working okay let me let me hang on hang on but you like nice stuff like banksy or something yes which is funny because i have a a story about both uh, both one that i hate and a story (laughs) about banksy so street art i hate some stupid motherfucker oh yeah because it's already open uh some stupid idiot decided that he would create a traffic jam on google maps using a red wagon full of phones oh my god yeah so this artist artist and i'm gonna go this is what i'm saying i Mm -hmm. i mean and then he like does like annoying things like he makes it 99 phones like uh, uh, i'm annoyed by that i don't know why (laughs) but i'm like okay you and your 99 phones and like because it's like berlin and then i think like the 99 like red balloons and i feel like it's like an homage to that it's a red wagon it's a whole thing i don't like and so um yeah so he walked the streets of berlin pulling this red wagon with all these phones that that had google maps open and it gave the virtual illusion that all the roads were jam-packed what if you have shit to do i live in la and if i'm looking and i have to like avoid a a traffic jam that is a guy with i mean can we stop doing this (laughs) so what was his message okay I knew you were going to ask that because you're always like, what's the point? Why did they do it? What is? So it says in this process, it's pointing out, this is his quote, uh, the fact that we are highly focused on the data and we 
and uh, we tend to see it as objective, unambiguous, and interpretation-free. And in doing so, a blindness arises against the processes that da- that mm. data generates and the assumption that numbers speak for themselves. Not only the collection of data provides an er- interpretive scope, but also computing processes uh, uh, allow further interpretation. That I'm annoyed. So yeah. So basically, what it's about dick. like data is not objective and like you know. Okay, but who even said it was? And, right, and like I mean, if we all agree to use it in that one way, can you like just let us use it in that one way? The reason the like. It becomes – he's like showing that this can be this – that he says it's a potential instrument of power. Yeah, if it's misused we like know. you're doing, so behave yourself. Right. Stop doing that. We get – we understand that you can do that. I just don't – like I, I don't know. I'm a supporter of the arts, but I feel like something that – it's the same as like this is to me a, like a practical joke is really what it is. Why are we hiding mm-hmm. a practical joke and calling it art? Because like your whole rule is like – you don't like any practical jokes that, like, um, you know, make a fool of somebody or, or hurt somebody or get in somebody's way or whatever. I think, you know, maybe interfering with somebody's, like, commute to work or whatevs or causing, like, I don't need any extra ruckus or shenanigans in this 2020 place. Was there – were there consequences to this uh, art installation? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I feel like he must have broken some laws. Even when there's no traffic along. No, it didn't say anything. This I found it that this was on Vice and it was back in February. But He's a menace. Yeah, I don't like it. So I'm not even gonna say his name, Simon, first name only. It, it bothers me because it's like you're demonstrating that data and well, white men like you yes, yeah, have how'd power you guess? by by using it. Your right. power. Right. Like, okay, we're all very impressed and I know I learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> right. Like, I hate your guts. Thank you. I love when you like get angry at something like with me like this. It's great. I don't like that art has now been reduced to virality, like <sighs> trying to get a headline, you know? Yes. Oh, my God. This is – sh- oh, gosh. I want to talk to you so much more about this because I'll have to save it for another time because I want to talk about the – um how do you say the name of this auction house? Is it Soth- Soothby's? Soothby's? Oh, Sotheby's? Sotheby's? Uh-huh. They did a hip hop auction. Hip hop auction. Yes, of like okay. an auction of hip hop memorabilia. <clears throat> okay. And it's the, like, I would, I, I want to, I'll save it for next time in a future episode, but I want to discuss the, what they called in this article, the museumification of culture. Mm. of taking culture and making it like and who profits from it and is it really and it's kind of like the street art thing and it's like hip hop and you know all this museumification of what culture of a culture like hip hop huh yeah how we're like I get that yes all right. and so I thought that was really easy or really uh, interesting um uh but the last thing I'll say is on Banksy before we wind it down um this was interesting. Banksy recently lost a settlement with a halt, like a greeting card company that used his image of the flower thrower that's on the wall in I think Jerusalem, I believe. Okay. And um they argued that it was because he is anonymous that it's like open for anybody to use and they won. He lost. <clears throat> what do you think of that? I mean, if he wants to be anonymous, it kind of goes with that. You can't I have agree. it both ways, right? Nope. You Mm-mm. can't. Yeah, see, good. I love when we're on the same page about stuff. No. Yeah. I feel like, you know, he wants cake and eat it. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Yep. He definitely wants his cake and eat it. And the fact that he, like, has a legal team and it, it has an annoying name. I, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's like, I can't remember. But, um... But, you know, he's got like a whole legal team and he's trying it, – it just seems like just – He's just extremely jealous. talented, obviously. Yes, yes. And seems very smart. But you – even if we didn't know, you would be able to tell that he's a white guy. Oh, for sure. For sure. Because yeah. he basically wants to do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And have absolutely no uh, downside to it. 
Yeah. Like you're saying, the mm-hmm. anonymity, but then he wants all the rights to his artwork. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. we don't know that you did it. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. How do I know? Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about that. That is, that's, there you go. End of story. There you go. Yeah. That's perfect. That's like, no, nope, done. Yeah. And I like that he does make people's wheels turn and he questions a uh, systemic stuff Mm -hmm. and government and oppression and all that it's great yeah but then then you don't get to decide a lot of stuff because you're anonymous and secret and all that jazz yeah and so i guess now this makes it so like his entire trademark portfolio is at risk so like what he tried what he does yeah right it's kind of like like i don't know why now what fine with that now now what yeah pranks on you banks yeah your move god right right (laughs) pranks on you so there you go that's my my, okay. uh, I love it. My full circle art story until. <laughs> yeah, we we went from the ocean to art. I like it. Yes, kind of like good topics, positive. Yeah, self care. Yeah, topics. let's wind it down. Let's wind do it down. It. I encourage people to like key be lime artsy. Pie. Yeah, see, even in like decorating a key lime pie. If oh, this is a fun one. I would love. If you, because like I loved um, the people who wrote about uh, their memories with their grandparents on some of the posts we did when we talked about that in episode. Um, so I know you guys listen to me when I say these things. If you have a recipe that you love, can we like share that? Because I need something besides key lime pies to make. Like I'm not looking for something super complicated, but if you have like a favorite dessert or something like and something easy that you think I should make, like, let me know. And I will gladly share my key lime pie recipe. Ooh, yeah. Yes, because I need, I mean, Susie has that great granola recipe. I saw mm-hmm. you making that, Suze. And I, uh, that. I will happily share my uh, key lime pie recipe, which is at, from the joy of cooking. So, like, you know, you probably already have it. Um, but it's delicious. So, like, yeah, send me your, and it's so simple. So I'm looking for, like, simple stuff that I can make. Oh, I love a crock okay. pot recipe, you know. Like, we so, learned, show me what you got. We learned um, pee in each other's faces. Yes, I was just gonna say that. Um, if you have an animal buddy, protect him. It's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. It's just kind, obviously. And uh, we're mad at, at street artists. So and we're mad at black countertops and black countertops. Yep. Say and no Banksy. to street art <laughs> and black countertops. Yes. Mm-hmm. Say no to street art. Just dumb street art. Yeah, just dumb. I mean, I like a lot of it, but like, let it be what it is. That's that. You can't have it both Don't ways. Don't forget to leave us a five star review. Yes. Mm-hmm. And share with a friend. Yeah, share it. And then you guys can laugh about lobsters together. And we'll see you next time. All right, bye. Bye. Did you know that everyone has an aura? Do you know what color your aura is? Maybe you have a fiery red personality or a quiet and calm blue or green. You could be an organized and methodical yellow or an explosive purple. Come join me, Mystic Michaela, on my podcast, Know Your Aura, to find out all about how your personality can be explained in colors. Mm -hmm.